We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Des Moines, Iowa, as we visit with Joe Woodley, who is heading into his sixth season as the head coach for the Grandview Vikings. Coach, another fantastic season last year, 11-1 and overall, 50 now consecutive wins in the Hart Conference. I don't think you've lost a, a conference game since you've been at the helm there, so congratulations for that. Another trip to the playoffs uh, making it to the NAI quarterfinals, just a great year. Can we start right there? Yeah, thanks, Joy. First of all, uh, first of all, thanks for uh, having me on your show. I know we've done this maybe one, one or two other times, and uh, just always pr- uh, appreciate your professionalism and uh, your interest in uh, you know NAI football, which obviously I think is a, a great, great product. As do you, obviously. But uh, yeah, certainly, uh, you know, it, it was a good year. Um, uh, again, we're we're always um, you know, as coaches, you always want to win that last one, and we didn't quite get to that point. Uh, but but certainly, uh, you know, lots to be proud of. You know, you have mentioned the the conference streak. You know, we we try not to bring that up too much around here. It's you know, it's kind of, kind of like that uh, you know Joe DiMaggio streak. You know, you just hear the, the the hit streak when guys get one going, trying to chase that thing. Not that we're trying to chase a specific number, but you know, as coaches, you. You know, you really go out there every game and you expect to win. And, um, you know, and again, I coaches get a lot of the credit for it. But at the end of the day, it's the players doing this thing. And it's been a number of players over, uh, obviously, five years. Uh, and even, um, you know, it dates back one year prior to me being the head coach. We uh, we won our last regular season game the year before uh, I, I got the, the head job. So, uh, but, but yeah, certainly proud of all that. And, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what that gets you. <laughs> <laughs> other than a few pats on the back, but uh, again, certainly proud of of where we're at and um, you know where where we've been in the past. You know, uh, when, when my dad was a head coach, we certainly accomplished a lot of great things as well, and uh, of course, a national championship back in 2013. And you know, we just kind of want to be uh, always in that discussion of playing uh, playing in December, uh, and that's what we talk about uh, with our with our team and. Uh, we were able to get to that point again last year, ran into a, you know, a really good College of Idaho team and uh, certainly a team we had a lot of respect for. And, uh, you know, we had played them in the past. Uh, I think it was 2019, I believe it was my first year. We played them in the second round and, you know, we we, we got the better of them that day, but they got the better of us this time. And um, I, I just think that was a program that was pretty hot and pretty confident. Not that we weren't. Uh, it was just kind of one of those games where, you know, I felt like we were – we were in pretty good control of that game, um, you know, the entire first half. You know, it was, um, you know, I thought our defense was playing really, really well in the first half. And uh, offensively, we were moving the football. We just couldn't score any touchdowns. And, you know, we were up 9-0, 9-0 at halftime and didn't feel like there was, you know, a ton of adjustments to be made. Not that, you know, you you know, if you're waiting until halftime to make adjustments, it's too late. I just felt like we were, uh, we, we were in a good um, – you know, we, we were in a good rhythm there. I thought we just needed to put some points on the board as we got down in the red zone. But credit to them, they came out and, uh, you know, they, you know, quite, quite, quite honestly, they just they just took it to us. Uh, defensively, we had a hard time slowing them down. They got got a little bit of their quarterback run game going. We got them to a, a you know, a third and short situation. I don't know if it was third and two, third and three, uh, maybe the first or second series of the second half. They got the ball and. Um, you know, they got kind of in a wildcat uh, type deal and, you know, we had stopped it the, 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 the two times prior. They got into it again and maybe maybe it just kind of was blocked a little differently. We, we over pursued maybe a little bit too much on the backside. They creased us, uh, got a big run out of it. Uh, and then I think they might have scored one or two plays later and they kind of got a little momentum going in their favor. And, um, you know, it just really we we just had a hard time that, you know, uh, taking that confidence back away from them. And, and really, you know, we, we had an opportunity uh, late in the game, um, you know, to, I want to say it was 21 to 21 to 17, they were up. And uh, I think there was, you know, approximately 10 minutes left in the game. We're down on the three yard line. Um, you know, we throw kind of a, kind of a wheel, wheel, wheel route concept to our tight end out to the field. Uh, maybe, you know, too long of a throw. I don't know a little bit of, miscommunication between the quarterback and the and the tight end because it, it was you know it was there and uh just kind of you know for for whatever reason uh didn't didn't work out their guy intercepts it and returns at 95 yards for a touchdown so 
you go from potentially going up 24 to 21, down 28, 17. And that was, I don't want to say that was the nail in the coffin because our guys kept fighting, but, uh, you know, a little bit of, um, I don't know if panic's the right word sets in, but, you know, just the urgency ramps up and, you know, I just think human nature takes over there a little bit and you start, uh, start pressing a little too much. And, you know, that's probably, probably, uh, what we did a little bit and that, and that's a reflection on me. So, uh, but, uh, you know, certainly lessons learned. And, and again, they made the plays to do it too. I'm not trying to take anything away from them and very well coached team and, uh, and they were ready to go. I mean, they, they, you know, I know the flight from, uh, Idaho out to here is, is not a fun one. I know, I know it's chartered, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And, uh, that's a credit to them. That was a tough football team that came in here and beat us. And quite frankly, they uh, they they went down and gave Kaiser their probably best game of the year. Uh, you know, had every opportunity to beat Kaiser. I think they were down inside the you know ten or fifteen yard line four or five times and didn't didn't get any points out of it. So uh, and they only ended up losing by a touchdown. So uh, I know we lost to a quality team. I don't feel like we're you know, we're, we're losing ground or anything like that. It just, you know, unfortunately, I hate using the excuse. It was one of them days, but it's kind of what it was. And, um, you know, we uh, hopefully we learn from that. We've got a number of kids coming back and uh, hopefully they're, you know, they're paying attention or remembering those types of situations. And uh, believe me, I'll, I'll certainly remind them a time or two. But, uh, uh, but, but again, at the end of the day, it was still, you know, an 11 win year. Uh, made it to the, I guess, the third round of the playoffs, considering we had the first round by, won our first round game against uh, what I thought was a pretty darn good Dickinson State team that had went out uh, and beat um, uh, Montana Tech on the road in the playoffs. And, and then we were, they came into our place and I thought we played pretty well that day. And, um, you know, so uh, a lot of good things, um, but, uh, you know, I think that just kind of what makes you hungry for, for this year. And, you know, you start getting them butterflies this time of year as, as the season approaches and probably not quite as, you know, I don't have them quite as much yet because we, we don't open until September 7th. So uh, a little bit extra summertime, which I'm not going to complain about. We tried to schedule a couple uh, FCS games. Uh, don't really don't have much luck trying to schedule within uh, NAI non-conference or, um, you know, even division two. So, we tried to find a couple. Uh, one of them told us no. They just, you know, pretty much didn't want to play. And other one I thought was going to happen, it didn't. And uh, so we're, you know, we're here with 10 games again, and uh, which is okay. You know, uh, gives us a little extra time here in the summer to develop our guys and, uh, you know, and, and gives you a little bit more time, um, you know, within the with, within fall camp. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we don't report till August 9th at this point, so a little less than a month from now. And, um, uh, believe me that that's okay. So we, we, we've, we've opened in August every year I've been here, um, since, uh, since 2008. So this will be a different change and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to see what it does. Well, you mentioned 2008 coach. It, it's something about the longevity of, of you being there. And I wanted to talk about that just briefly too. ESPN came out with an article recently, just a few weeks ago, that talked about 30 coaches that will define the next decade of college football. Your name was on the list. The only NAI coach, by the way, to be on that list. There's consistency. All those teams that you just mentioned, too, are a testament to uh, the high level of football that that you all play. And there's a consistency there at Grandview with your father, you mentioned, and, and your time as well. Talk a little bit about that and the culture and and you know how how uh, an organization like ESPN might look to you as being one of those coaches to define the next decade. Yeah, I, I found out about that article uh, probably about the same time you did. It was it was news to me. Um, you know, all of a sudden I just started getting uh, getting a handful of text messages, uh, and I'm like, "What do you? I have no idea what you're talking about." And, uh, and then then of course you know uh, you pick up your phone. It's pretty easy. You go to it and. Uh, your your name's on there, and and, and certainly very flattering. But you know, uh, quite honestly, I don't know exactly what I've, I I did to deserve that. Or uh, you know, again, it's still a, a testament to the you know the players that we have in this program. And you mentioned my dad, you know, kind of taking a chance and starting this program back in 2008, laying the foundation. And you know, and he hired me, not much experience uh, to be his defensive coordinator, and. You know, he just kind of threw me in the deep end and said, sink or swim. And that was probably the best thing that happened for me um, in regards to, you know, not that I'm an expert with X's and O's by any means, but, you know, it kind of forces you to have some answers. And, 
you know, when you get in those tough games, because you got to win tough games to, uh, you know, get a program going, you know, so it's hard. Uh, it really is. And, um, you know, we were able to, you know, that, that first year was a very tough year. We played uh, 18 true freshmen uh, in 2008. We didn't redshirt. We didn't practice for a year. We had three weeks. Uh, that, that's my dad for you. You know, he's pretty old school. I think we had the option uh, to, you know, basically go a year practice, maybe, you know, play some JV games, things like that, which is what most programs are doing. And, uh, you know, uh, looking back, I, I wish we would have had that year to practice, but, you know, hindsight's 2020, you know, uh, I, I say that and it probably did work out because the following year we win eight games. And uh, so maybe it was the right way to do it. And, uh, you know, and ever since then, I, you know, we've won eight games a year ever, ever since 2009. And uh, again, that's a, that's a credit to my dad and, you know, kind of the, the, the philosophy he put in this program and, um, you know, the, the, the groundwork, all those things. And, you know, and having someone like me, his son, who, you know, if you, if your son isn't loyal to you, you know, what, what, what is there, you know, there was, there's been great loyalty in this program. And I think he created that. And I, uh, I'd like to think I've been an extension of that uh, with the guys that we've hired, uh, the guys on my staff, uh, you know, our quarterback, Derek Fulton, uh, he was our quarterback or our, excuse me, our offensive coordinator, uh, Derek Fulton. He was our quarterback on our national title team. Um, you know, uh, I, I was fairly instrumental in recruiting him. Our defensive coordinator, uh, EJ Peterson was, was our first, he was our first, first team all American at linebacker. I recruited EJ, uh, out of Iowa Central Junior College. Uh, Jordan Knock was Derek's. Uh, Jordan Knox, I'm, again, I'm just kind of talking about our full-time coaches. We have we have five in the office every day. Jordan Knox uh, was Derek's backup and then became, uh, you know, the starter for two years after uh, Coach Fulton was done. He was a conference player of the year twice. Uh, and then Tyler Martin, our special teams coordinator, he's been with us since 2012. So there's a lot of loyalty. There's a lot of continuity. Uh, I, I do believe that stuff matters. Uh, in the world of college football where coaches are, you know, it's a carousel every year. And, you know, and, and all of us to a man have had opportunities to, you know, to go look at other things. And, you know, there's just something special about this place. It's a hard place to, you know, it's a hard place to leave because we have had coaches do that and they tell us, you know, how much they miss it. And it's, it's just special. I don't know how to explain it. You know, we've got, we've got good administration, uh, Troy, Troy Plummer, our athletic director, um, you know, he kind of lets us do our thing. Uh, he's not in our business all the time. And, uh, you know, and I, and I don't think it's like that everywhere else. And uh, he supports us. And of course, uh, we, we've had two different presidents. Uh, we had one for, a, for an extended period of time, uh, the, the one who kind of helped start the program. Then we have, a, uh, we have a new one now. I believe she's going into her third year, uh, if my mind serves me correctly. And she's all on board. Uh, with athletics here at Granby because it's uh, you know it's a pretty successful athletic department across the board uh, and again you can't do those things if you don't have uh, support from above and you know and there's some things coming down coming down the road that I think will even make us uh, an even more an attractive place with facilities and things like that because we do share with a you know the high school uh, facility right now and you know hopefully here within uh, within reason uh, you know, we'll, we'll have our own facility and I, and I think that'll make us even more special, but, uh, but again, um, you know, kind of getting back to your initial question, Joey, you know, I, I, again, just very flattered, uh, just, just being mentioned with a lot of those, cause I know a lot of those coaches or know of them, um, you know, that were part of that list. And, um, you know, you, you could have picked a name out of a hat with, you know, with some of the top NAI programs and they'd have been very fitting in that. And, uh, you know, so I'm flattered and, um, but it's not something I, I go around pounding my chest about. I can promise you that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people and, you know, they like to talk about it and I'm glad cause it brought maybe some attention to Grandview, um, you know, but, but really at the end of the day, that's, that's not why I do this thing. It's about, um, you know, former relationships with, with, with the players, coaches, um, you know, the families in this program. And I like to think we've, we've tried to do things the right way here and, uh, treat people right. That was always my dad's, you know, biggest thing, you know, the golden rule, treat people the way you would want to be treated. And uh, I think we've done that for the most part. And, uh, you know, and I think that's, that, that's how you can have great success at a place like this and have some longevity. And, um, you know, I think that's what we've done. I appreciate your take on that coach. That, uh, goes a long way to go along with the, the article and, and uh, no, you don't, you don't have to, 
to pound your chest about that. That's what folks like us get to do and, and get to promote you and talk about the good things. And, and we enjoy talking about the good things. Uh, speaking of good things, let's look ahead to 2024. One of the good things for you is that Jackson Waring is coming back. 2,900 plus yards passing, 36 touchdown passes, ran for five more, just seven picks on the season. Uh, a great uh, year for him, and the career's not over. Tell us a little bit about the offense. Yeah, yeah. It, it obviously, Joey, it, it starts with your starts with who your quarterback is, and again, going back to the the success we've had over the last five years, we've had. Had some really good ones. Had Johnny Sullivan, um, you know, uh, for four years. Ben Furkin along with him helped, you know, uh, win some playoff games when Johnny was down and Ben was the quarterback the year before. So those two were outstanding players. Johnny, uh, obviously, um, you know, was a starter uh, the last four years, helped us get to a national title game, a couple semifinal games. Um, you know, so uh, we, we've been fortunate in that regard. And then, you know, fast forward into last season, uh, Jackson Waring, um, you know, he's a local kid, you know, sometimes, sometimes guys kind of just fall into your lap. You know, I don't, I don't think it was any magical recruiting job that we did, uh, in getting Jackson. I mean, we talked to him a little bit out of high school, but we, we thought he was maybe a higher level quarterback, which, um, you know, he was Illinois state, uh, took him out of high school. He, 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 he gave it a chance there, uh, probably more than a chance. And I think maybe he should have, cause I think he's that talented and, uh, and I, but he did play. He did play in a lot of games there, um, and pretty successful. Uh, I, I believe you know a, a new offensive coordinator came in that that didn't you know recruit him, and that's kind of how that world is at that level. Uh, new coordinator comes in, brings a quarterback that he feels is, that he felt was more suited for what we wanted to do. Jackson even want, he even mentioned he's like I'll I'll change positions. He he tried like. He, he tried like hell to make it work at that place because he's a he's a very loyal kid. He, he wants to see things to the end, um, but it just came down to he had he had two of his buddies that were in our uh, program at the time. Uh, one was a really close well, two of them I guess were really close. One I think he might have been a little bit closer with, but uh, one that had already been here. He came with another guy that transferred in with the from the University of Iowa. There was a trio of kids that were uh, best friends in high school. And, uh, you know, that that kind of helped put it over the edge. And, of course, we we did everything we could to make that happen. He, he comes and uh, he quite, quite frank. I don't want to say he's overweight because he's I mean, he's built like a Greek god, uh, even when he looked overweight, you know, overweight to <laughs> to me, is something totally different than it is to him. But he was big. He was really big when he got here. Uh, I don't I don't I think Jackson's he's I think he's around 220 right now. I think he was around 240 when he got here, like I said, because he was he, he was you know, thinking of maybe even moving to tight end, um, you know, at Illinois State. So he put a bunch of weight on. And But anyway, so he came in. He was a little heavy, a little sluggish uh, in spring ball when he got here. Uh, but we knew he, he was very talented. You know, there was no doubt about that. And uh, and the kid's just a worker. You know, I mean, 24-7, he's, you know, his mind's on football. And uh, and, and he's a 4.0. So I'm, I'm not saying, you know, nothing else gets in the way. But uh, he, he's just really invested into becoming better in every facet of his life. And, you know, and football is obviously – uh, something that he's grown up loving. His dad was a coach, and uh, you know he's just done a done an outstanding job. I don't know that he, uh, I don't think that he surprised me uh, by by what he did last year. But man, did he at times he did. You know, just some of the plays that he made. You know, the physicality of him. Like I said, he's a little bigger guy, and you you, you generally don't see quarterbacks you know running over linebackers and you know seeking out contact. Believe me, we're trying to. <laughs> avoid that uh, with him, but it was the first game of the year and he had two big time collisions that he won. I'm like, whoa, you know, we, we've, we've got a, you know, we've got a guy here that's pretty special and, and he can really throw it. He's got a big arm and, you know, he just adds another dimension to our offense that we probably, I don't want to say we didn't have, uh, but he's kind of taking it to another level with our quarterback run game. And uh, just, just cause that's hard to defend, you know, as a defensive coach forever, um, you know, you, you, you just hate defending those quarterbacks that, that can, you know, run the football, extend plays. You know, they can run between the tackles if you need them to. Uh, those are all the things he does, and, and it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And may, and it kind of opens up some other things. And and he has just gotten better and better. I thought he got better throughout the year last year. Uh, and, and even in the, you know, the, the, the playoff game, I thought he played well. 
um, you know, we just had the, you know, the mistake there at the end of the game. And again, that's, uh, I'll never put any one, uh, you know, mistake on a player. It's a group deal here. And, um, but, it, but, you know, he, he's learned from it and believes it, it motive it's, it's motivated him. Uh, he's really become, I think he's kind of a natural born leader in a different way. Uh, he kind of leads by example. Uh, he's becoming a little bit more vocal. Um, yeah, and he's a, he's a fairly vocal kid, but, you know, kind of holding his teammates accountable, things like that, because they all respect him, you know, because he's, he's one of our best football players, if not the best. And uh, he's, re he's really taking the bull by the horns this off season through spring ball, you know, up and through our, our summer workouts, you know, we've got close to 70 kids here every day in the summer uh, and he's leading them, you know, and he's, and then we, we do some things on Sunday nights, football wise. And, you know, he's, he's staying after he's coming before he's organizing things outside of that stuff. So, uh, when you have a guy like that, you're, you know, you feel pretty good about what you have, uh, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, going into last year, you know, we had, we, we, we had to replace a quarterback and five, five uh, offensive linemen. So, um, you know, we didn't really know what we had. We thought we were going to be okay. You know, it was just some younger old linemen uh, that, that were finally getting their turn. And, you know, this year we, we return all five uh, old linemen, you know, our starting quarterback. And then, I mean, th th this isn't, crazy for me to say, but it's probably the first time I've said this since we've been here in two, since 2008. Uh, we, we have a lot of depth on the offensive line. It's, it's crazy. I mean, not many, not many programs. I don't care what level you're at. Uh, you know, it's hard to say that. And I, I feel confident, uh, you know, right now, uh, you know, we, we, we got nine guys I know that can play uh, and, and there may be more, you know, as, as we kind of get down the, you know, as we get going, maybe we'll find even more depth with, guys were either bringing in or guys that just got better over the summer. So feel really good about that. Got to replace a really, uh, two really dynamic players on offense. Um, you know, Avery Gates, uh, our running back, uh, the past four years, uh, he, he, he battled injuries, but you know, he, he was really healthy this past season for the most part, the running backs take a lot of shots and, uh, it's a tough position to play, but Avery was such a game breaker and he could do so many different things. He was really good at catching the ball out of the backfield. He was really smart. We could line him up at wide receiver, and he was still a good back between the tackles. He was just a little bit smaller, uh, but but you know he he played bigger than he was, and uh, he he's going to be a really tough one to lose. You know it'll be we for the most part have always been by committee here uh, at that position, but uh, we will definitely be um, you know this coming year, and I, I feel pretty good about the guys that we have in that room. Uh, right now, uh, we, we've got a transfer uh, that, that that's coming in as well. Not that we're banking on, you know, any transfer to come in and, and be the guy, but, you know, it just gives us, a, you know, maybe another option. And, uh, you know, and then out at receiver, uh, we lose uh, DeMond Street, who was he, he was he was a big time player for us. And uh, just just a deep threat uh, every time we, we drop back pass because of his speed. And uh, so it'll be it'll be difficult to, to replace him. But we've. Uh, and then we we lost uh, uh, Seth Jewell, who was the kid I was referring to that that was Jackson's uh, buddy out of high school. Uh, we 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 lost him. Um, we lost another steady player, Nick Danielson, that played a bunch of player uh, plays for us. So probably I don't want to call it a question mark because uh, I I feel confident in the guys that we have, but the receiver spot uh, doesn't have a ton of. Um, you know, snaps in them other than, you know, two guys. We got two coming back that I think are really, really good. Isaiah Toki uh, and Jordan Cum, uh, really good players. Um, I, I, uh, Toki, I think, is going to be a guy that, you know, is going to kind of burst onto the scene. He played a lot for us last year, uh, but but has just continued to get better and better. And, and if Jordan can stay healthy, he's just kind of battled things here and there. Uh, I think he's he's got the potential. And then it's going to be come down to a, a bunch of our younger players who's going to step up, you know, and because uh, you've, you know, you've got to have at least five, six guys in that group that can play. And we're, we're still trying to figure out who those guys are confident in the ones we have. But uh, also, you know, that's what's fun about coaching. You, get to get, you know, you kind of get to see who who's the guy that steps up in those spots and, um, you know, somebody will and, and, and we'll figure it out. And that's and that's kind of what we've done over the course of time here. We're visiting now with Joe Woodley, who is the head football coach at Grandview. And I appreciate Coach you taking time with us here on Midwest Sports Net, where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you watching, please subscribe to the channel. It really does make a difference. Coach, 
looking ahead to the defensive side of the ball, we talked about we started the offense with someone who's coming back. Let's start defense and say, hey, you've got some folks to replace. Uh, and I think uh, you'd lead with Tristan Waugh, almost uh, definitely there leading the country in sacks last season, a ton of TFLs, player of the year on the defensive side of the ball, the Cliff Harris Award winner as well. Talk a little bit about your defense heading into 24. Yeah, yeah, losing Tristan's going to be uh, – it's going to be tough, but, uh, you know, um, you know, we, we, we lost somebody before him too, you know, so you kind of just figure out who that next guy is and, and yeah, just to, you know, kind of brag on Tristan a little bit, what a what an outstanding career he had for us. And kid we had kind of, you know, chased in recruiting for a while. Uh, he was kind of trying to see if he could get to a higher level, and quite frankly, I don't know how he didn't, um, you know, at least at an FCS level type guy you know, uh, program. Cause I thought he was that type of player. Uh, you know, he might've just been an inch short, you know, I, I mean, he, but he's six two, so I don't know how tall you need to be to be a good player, I guess anymore, but, uh, yeah, just, just a real dominant season that he had. And, um, you know, he, he allowed me to do, do, do something really cool. Um, uh, I can't remember when we went down there. I think it was, uh, right, right around the end of April or middle April, we went down to the, uh, you know, the star of Texas and Frisco and, um, you know, got to meet Cliff Harris, got to meet uh, the Jones family, all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it, it was just a really, uh, really neat deal that he got to accept that Cliff, Cliff Harris award. And, and, and I'm, uh, I'm not old. I'm not young. I'm kind of right in between. I really don't remember him, uh, Cliff Harris, but oh my gosh, I, I had no idea how good of a player he was and, uh, the impact he made on, you know, small college football and then uh, becoming an all pro. We, just a quick story. We, you know, they're taking us a tour on that star of Texas and they take us into the, the defensive backs room, you know, where the DBs meet for the Cowboys. And there's two pictures on the wall. One of them's Dion and the other's Cliff Harris. So that, that kind of told me uh, how good that guy was. And then they, you know, and then they started showing us his films and things like that. And that guy was an assassin. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, you know, just, just a real neat experience for, for a kid, you know, from Fairfield, Iowa, you know, went to a junior college, comes to Grandview and, and all of a sudden he's nationally recognized and, uh, and all well-earned, you know, um, you know, so it was, it was a neat experience and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, and I talked to that about our, you know, to, to our team, I'm like, man, what a motivation to go, go be a part of something that, you know, play your best. And, you know, cause sometimes those things just happen, you know, I don't think, you know, I didn't even know that there was an award. I, I thought it was just one guy uh, this past, I think it's been the past year, the past two years, they've, they've changed it to each level. So that's, 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 uh, you know, a pretty neat deal. But anyways, just, uh, just kind of moving on with, with, you know, with, with, with uh, what we have back on defense, we, we did lose, uh, did lose some guys, uh, some, some real quality players. Kai Mosley was, you know, really in theory, a five-year starter for us at defensive tackle, which is unheard of. Most, most freshmen don't get to come in and play at defensive tackle because they're not ready. So, uh, you know, and he was a three or four time first team all conference player. Um, you know, and I always heard once, once upon a time, you want to be strong up the middle and anything, you know, just like baseball, shortstop, second base, you know, football, you know, right down the middle of your defense and, you know, having Kaim in there as a, you know, a 300 pound guy that could move and, and make a bunch of plays, you know, that's going to be, uh, you know, tough, tough to lose that experience, you know, just the leadership that he brought, uh, lost a defensive end, uh, another defensive end, kind of our bookends, uh, Gabe Duffy, uh, was a great player. He transferred from an NAIA school, uh, two years ago, um, you know, and he led the nation in sacks at the prior NAIA school he was at. And, uh, he didn't quite do that here, but he was, he was very effective, uh, and an outstanding player. So you're losing two really good players on the edge. But, uh, you know, we lose a linebacker in Seth Adrian, who had played a number of snaps for us uh, as a starter for the last two years and uh, just, just a great leader. Uh, outside linebacker, we lost kind of by different reasons, you know, just in the state of state of what we're in in college football. Um, you know, our, our kid that was, a, I don't know if he was second or third team All-American last year. Uh, quite frankly, he should have been a first teamer, but you can only have one. Uh, on the All-American teams uh, is, is how they do it. Nate Ewell, uh, it's, a first, it's one of the first guys each, anytime I met with a coach pregame, they would always ask about him. And, um, you know, he transferred, uh, transferred to another school and did it the right way, approached it the right way. I have a really good relationship with Nate. Uh, he transferred up to, a, you know, to an FCS, a really good FCS program. 
Um, that was that was the the thing I wanted to make sure of. He was going to go to a place where he'd have a chance to be successful because mm-hmm. he's been really successful here, and that'd be a tough sell to just go up to you know go get your butt beat every game. And so he, he's at a really good school and probably one of the top FCS conferences in the country. And uh, he's there with some people that I trust. Um, you know, he wasn't one of those guys that was, you know, out blabbing on Twitter and social media and, you know, asking for, you know, all these offers. So, like I said, he, he approached it the right way. And, and quite frankly, Joey, you know, all these kids are paying something to go to school, paying, you know, at our level you know, they're getting paid uh, at these other schools. So, yeah. um, you know, and, and I, I, and, and I thought he, there, there's always more you can do, you know, at a place. And, you know, I thought he still could have done more, but he had accomplished a lot. Uh, and he just wanted to go uh, try another opportunity, uh, you know, and I supported him. And so, like I said, you know, he did it the right way and I appreciate that, but that'll uh, again, be another big hole for us to fill. And, um, Lost a really good corner in Jalen Perkins, and uh, but you know the 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 common theme is here. You know we we've been successful for a while, and again I'm not trying to sound egotistical, arrogant, anything like that. But guys have always stepped up. You know there, there's going to be a new uh, one of those guys at each of those spots. You know we we brought in. Um, you know we we've got younger guys at those defensive ends that I think are really good players. Uh, you know, that that will step up. I'm not expecting them to be Tristan Waugh or Gabe Duffy. I want them to be them uh, and kind of do it their own way. Uh, you know, it, in the secondary, we do return a couple starters there. We, we return one safety um, in a corner, and then we have another safety that's played a lot of football for us. So we're not expecting a huge drop off. Probably the biggest um, hole I would say we need to fill is that outside linebacker spot that Nate played just because he was so dynamic. We never had to take him off the field, you know, run or pass, anything like he could do everything. So we're, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to approach that. Our D line, I feel really good about. We got two guys that Kaim rotated with, um, you know, in, inside there. And, um, you know, and those guys are about as good as it gets at this, at this level, as far as I'm concerned. One of them, uh, played in the national title game in 2021 as a true freshman. The other one, uh, you know, what was rotating uh, in that game as a true freshman. So we, we've got some guys, um, you know, that I feel like that are going to step in. And uh, again, you know, will it be game one or game two? I, I don't know. Um, you know, but but at some point we'll, we'll start playing really good football and hopefully it's right away. Uh, that's the plan to do it right away. But but there, there, there'll be a little bit of growing pains and accepting those new roles and things like that. But, uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I, again, that getting back to what I talked about uh, with the receivers on offense, I'm excited to see who kind of takes takes the bull by the horns there and, um, you know, um, you know, takes advantage of it and creates their own story, creates their own history. And, uh, you know, that's what's fun about this thing. It will be fun to see who steps in, Coach. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching that as well. The defense last year was just – it was – phenomenally good and the numbers back that up and it was just a a fantastic season for you all in that Uh, special teams i'll I'll say again someone you have to replace uh, to to at least get the ball rolling there or or to get the ball kicked if you will nathan hamilton is a name that uh i'm sure it's it's a big time name throughout the program history Uh, 10 for 14 field goals last year he's had some big ones over the year including a a 50-plus yarder for a win in a big-time early season game a couple of years ago. And and start right there with your special teams, and and I know you're going to have to talk about some new names. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, Nathan, uh, you know, his eligibility is up. He, he used all five years. You know, he used that COVID year, and um, luckily for us that he did, you know, it, it just – you know, he, he was he, he was just a, a great weapon to have to, to get points on the board. Just, you know, once you got down kind of inside that 25-yard line, you felt pretty confident uh, that, you, that you were going to come away with some points just because of his accuracy. And um, and so so that'll be tough. And obviously his kickoffs and, uh, you know, though those were really good. And, uh, again, just, a, just, just a, you know, a steady performer. I mean, he was the starter the day he got here and, um, you know, he, he never looked back since, made a ton of big kicks. Like you mentioned, the Benedictine game a couple of years back, 51 year, 52 yard, I can't remember what it was as time expired. And, you know, he just, he kind of had that calming influence on, on me, <laughs> to the coaches, uh, everybody, because he, he had ultimate confidence in himself. And, 
Um, you know, just uh, just a special talent. One I don't know that we'll ever see here again. Um, you know, but uh, but again, it, it opens the door for somebody else. We 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 have a, a freshman uh, that that was kind of his backup. Uh, we we already have a our punter. You know, kind of alluding to our other special teams, kind of similar to Nathan. He's but he's now taken his fifth year, uh, and he's been a steady uh, you know performer for us. Two time first team All Conference punter. Uh, but but is probably one of the things he does best is our kickoffs. Uh, so uh, at least at least we got that part I feel like uh, figured out for the most part is our, our kickoff stuff uh, with Cody Krushwitz doing that. Um, you know, but our, our kicking game is going to be a competition. We got to try and uh, simulate it the best we can in practice. And uh, like I said, we have a, a freshman, we have a transfer coming in uh, that that will be here uh, when we start. Um, you know, we, we we have one more maybe. Uh, that we're still working with because we want to have some options there because it's a very important position. It's helped us win a lot of games, and uh, we put a pretty big emphasis on special teams here. Uh, Tyler Martin, who I uh, had alluded to earlier as our special teams coordinator, does a really good job uh, with all those units. He was a former special teamer uh, at Northwest Missouri State as a player. He knows how important that was. He was a part of a lot of big big uh, wins and games, and, and that is a special teams as, as one of his roles. So um, you know, he gets our guys to, to really get fired up about special teams. and um, But you can't be great at special teams unless you got guys that can kind of kick the ball or guys that can return it or whatever. Uh, so uh, those are the things that we need to figure out here uh, in camp. And, um, you know, and that's what uh, I don't want to say that's all we get paid to do, but that's part of what we get paid to do is, you know, figure out and put guys where they need to be. The ultimate thing of what we do is helping these guys become – become better people, graduate them, you know, put them out into society as leaders. And, um, you know, that's, that's the main goal. But as far as just the football side of things, that's what we've got to figure out. Um, you know, what, you know, how can we be successful with what we have? And, um, you know, and I feel good about who we have. It's just a matter of them going out and doing it at this point, because, uh, the abilities there, all that stuff's there, but you never know how it's going to go until, you know, those lights come on, uh, so to speak. And, uh, you know, there's that adrenaline's going, you know, how do you handle all those moments? And, um, but, but uh, I, I feel confident in what we have uh, within those special teams units, uh, you know, to kind of move us forward uh, and move out of an era, I guess, so to speak with Nathan being our guy. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe this guy, you know, comes out of nowhere. I shouldn't say out of nowhere because we, we've seen what he can do. Um, but, uh, you know, um, may, maybe it'll, Hopefully we can kind of pick up for the most part where we left off, um, you know, and, uh, but I guess time will tell on that. It gets started in September, as you mentioned, maybe a little bit of a different feel this year, September 7th, a 10 game slate. You all are at home to take on a new program in William Woods. And then you go on the road the next week at Benedictine, tough heart contest all the way around. Talk a little bit about the opening to your season. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you know, we, I talk to the team, you know, at least once a week here in the summertime and, you know, we just, uh, again, I know it's a coaching cliche, but it's, you know, just, just, just keep staying consistent, you know, and I think that's what we've done throughout this program. Just, just go to work every day. Um, you know, don't, don't take days off. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't procrastinate. Just, just go put the work in. You know, if you, if you do that every day, you're practicing every day, you know, we put an emphasis on staying healthy during camp and, you know, giving guys some incentives, you know, if, if they make it all the way through camp, um, you know, because you've got to be out there, you, you've got to be out there practicing, you got to be do, doing the things, um, you know, quite frankly, that everybody's doing them, but how are, how are we doing them? You know, everybody's probably doing some form of summer workout or uh, an OTA or whatever it is, but how are you doing them when you're doing them? And, um, you know, we try to do all those things at, at a, you know, as highest level as we can. And, uh, as long as you're doing that every day, you know, everything else is going to take care of itself. And uh, quite frankly, the, you know, the, uh, the, the focus right now is just, you know, this week, next week, I told them last night, we've got, we've got three weeks left uh, in our summer workouts. And uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of time, you know, really, you know, that's whatever, you know, 12 workouts that they still have uh, to get bigger, faster, stronger, you know, and then we do some OTA stuff once a week. So Got two more of those left. Got three weeks of, uh, of workouts and conditioning. And, um, you know, if, if they continue to get better in all those things, you know, that first game and 
Um, second game that you mentioned, all those, all those things will kind of take care of itself as long as you're preparing right now for that. You can't just show up and expect to win because of what we've done in the past and, you know, what it says on our, you know, the, the decal on our helmet, you know, believe me, because we're going to get everybody's best shot. Um, you know, and, and you wouldn't want it any other way because uh, that should bring out the best in you. And, uh, and I think, um, obviously, for a long time, our guys have really embraced that role. And um, I, I know I certainly do. Um, you know, you, you, you try to play in as high a level game as you can. And, um, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the focus right now is the rest of this summer. Uh, then, then once that's over, it'll be training camp. And then as we get closer to that first game against William Woods, uh, you know, because I've, I've talked to their coach, Coach Mendez, uh, a couple times now. And, um, you know, I, I told him, I'm like, man, I've been in your shoes, you know, because they're they're new and they're they're doing it kind of how we did it. You know, how, what I alluded to earlier, they're they're jumping right in They're, um, You know, they pretty much recruited last year. And, you know, what they have is what they have out there on on Saturday, um, you know, when we play them uh, the seventh. So um, um, but but again, you know, we're, we're going to I don't care what helmet would, is out there on that Saturday night. Uh, as long as we take care of ourselves, I, you know, I, I feel like we have a chance to be successful. And um, that's what I tell our guys that after every game. It's not because we do a scouting report every week, you know, just like everybody does in the season. But, you know, and I usually end it with something along the lines of guys. I, it doesn't matter who, what they do or anything. It, it matters what we do. Um, you know, and I, and I think that's the mindset that you got to have. You can't get caught up in all the stats and, you know, the talk and, and, and whatever else, you just got to take care of your own business and take care of the football, try and take the football away, play good defense. Don't beat yourselves, win on special teams. Uh, you know, that, that that's kind of the formula uh, that, that we we have. We don't have a million different things we look at. We, we're not, <laughs> maybe I should be more of an analytical guy, but uh, you know, that's just, <laughs> I, 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 I'll never have the, 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 the time or the, uh, the depth to, to, to go through all that stuff. It's, you know, it's still about um, uh, the, the things I just mentioned and, um, you know, just playing football the way it was meant to be played. And, uh, you know, you, you, you take care of it, you try and take it away, you keep them out of the end zone, you know, you flip the field with special teams, uh, you know, that, that, that's really the recipe and there, there there's really no, uh, you know, magical thing that, that needs to happen in football. You just need to play well and uh, not beat yourself. It seems like it's worked, Coach. So. <laughs> well, for, I, yeah, uh, like I said, it's uh, um, you, you never know because uh, there's been years where that hasn't quite been the case and you got to overcome some things. And um, But, but yeah, uh, I, I think we've got the right kind of kids that buy into it. Um, you know, we, we have the kind of, you know, our, our program right now we've got – we, we've got a lot of kids from the state of Iowa uh, on, our, on our team, and not that that makes us any better than anybody, but I do know that there's a lot of really good football in this state, especially for our level, and and all these other schools are you know are starting to figure it out. Uh, I thought I I thought I read a st statistic somewhere like per population, like we're we're one of the top top states in the country for guys in the NFL. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's crazy, you know, because it, it seems like more and more are coming each year. And and I just think that's, you know, kind of that old, you know, Midwest work ethic, farmer mentality type thing. Not that I am a was a farmer or anything like that, but a lot of farming communities, you know, or families that come from farming communities that are in the cities, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it, it's just, a, you know, kind of a blue collar work ethic. And I'm sure it's like that in a lot of other places. But, you know, you look at schools around the, you know, around the NAI, there's a lot of good schools from from the state of Iowa. You know, Northwestern's obviously uh, they got a bunch of kids from the state of Iowa. Morningside's got a bunch of kids from the state of Iowa. Uh, obviously, we do. And we've we've all three kind of been in that, you know, top top 10 to top five range. Uh, over the last five years, um, you know, so uh, and then the top schools at the Division Two, some of the top schools at Division Two are really coming in and trying to take a lot of recruits out of here. And then, of course, you've got Iowa, Iowa State, Northern Iowa. So and, and those are all really successful programs. So uh, and, and you know, the junior colleges, Iowa Western, Iowa Central have had great success. And, you know, we're all kind of fighting over the same kids. And, you know, we you know, we sometimes we get them from the Iowa Westerns, Iowa Centrals. You and I transfers, Iowa transfers, Iowa State transfers. So um, it's just kind of our sweet spot. It's who we've been. And then you kind of grab some guys from, 
you know, may, maybe the transfer portal, so to speak. And then, you know, we have some pockets in some other states where we really trust some coaches. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're trying to surround ourselves with, with great kids, kids that are like-minded, highly motivated guys, um, you know, and, and that's really what it takes because, you know, there, there's plenty of times we, we went out uh, on game day and, you know, I, I call it losing warm-ups. You know, like, man, yeah, these guys look pretty darn good in warm-ups, but then all of a sudden that ball's kicked and, you know, I, I think we kind of hold our own in that regard and, um, you know, I'm pretty proud of that fact and, um, you know, that's – that's who we are and uh, might be boring. It might be whatever, but uh, um, it certainly pr- produced a lot of success over the course of time. So, and, and I'm, and I'm real proud of it. And again, it's a credit to the players, uh, the coaches on, on, on my staff, my dad's staff before me, uh, been here through all of it. And uh, you know, just, just really proud of this place. Well, I've been anything for, but bored. Uh, I have really appreciated getting to look back on last season. Again, a fantastic season for you all. I know, Coach, you want to win the last game, but it was a uh, from this perspective and this vantage, it was a fantastic season and fun to watch. And I'm already looking forward to seeing how it turns out for you all this season. We will follow the Vikings without question here on Midwest Sports Net. Coach Joe Woodley, thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today and previewing the upcoming season. You bet, Joey. I appreciate it. Anytime.